Hello, welcome back to the channel. Right, again, before I start, I want to thank each and every one of you that um, commented on my last video, um, records I collected while I was away from YouTube for a year. There were some great comments, uh, thank you all for that. Um, it's been quite nice actually doing the odd video. Like I said, there's nothing set in stone, I'm not doing them regularly, you know, just when I feel like it. But I had to do this one today. A concert like no other. Right, let me start from the beginning. Um, Christmas gone, a few of the girls chipped together and bought the wife tickets to go and see the new ABBA show that was coming out, I think it was May this year, uh, ABBA Voyage um, in London. So I bought uh, the wife the album, ABBA Voyage, so she could get a little bit familiar, a little bit au fait with some of the new songs. And the show was going to be actually on the wife's birthday, which was the 24th of July. Sunday just gone. So it was going to be two of the girls and the wife. Now, one of the daughters ended up booking a holiday, double booked, so she couldn't go. So wife was going to take one of her friends and one of her daughters. Well, on the day, on Sunday... On my wife's birthday, um, we all thought it was a 7.30 show. So we looked at the tickets, lastminute.com, um, and it was three o'clock in the afternoon show. One of the do the other daughter couldn't go. Uh, she couldn't get a babysitter for a little one who's only two years old. So the wife said, do you want to come? I did have a few bits that I was going to do, but I said, why not? Let's go. Now, I didn't know nothing about this show. So, and I'm not the biggest ABBA fan. I think this is the first time I've ever done a video on the channel about ABBA. Now, don't get me wrong. I grew up with ABBA, you know. I'm 56 years old. ABBA was a big part of my, it was just part of my soundtrack to my life, you know, growing up in the 70s. You heard ABBA a lot, you know, Mamma Mia and all the other songs, Dancing Queen. They're always around, you know, like Madness, like the Beatles, they're the soundtrack to your life. So anyway, we went. Uh, I said, yep, we'll go. Sunday, we all pulled into the car, made a wife and a friend, and we drove to Stratford. Uh, it was a Queen Elizabeth Park in Stratford. So about 40, 45 minute drive from here, not too bad. But you can actually get a train to London uh, and then got on the Docklands Light Railway and it takes you down to Pudding Mill Lane, I do believe it is. Something like that. And literally you get out of the train station and it's there in front of you. Now, I was kind of blown away when I got there because they've actually purposely built this arena just for the ABBA show. Because like I said, I knew it was coming. I see bits and bobs on the internet, but I didn't really pay a lot of attention to it. Um, so we all got there, lovely, nice and early. And it shows, the show was bang on at three o'clock. So we got in quite easily and... It is crazy, this place. Uh, they call it the Departure Lounge, right? And that's where you get your your food if you want a bite to eat. I grabbed a beer. Uh, and the wife got a little bit of merch. You know, she got to grab a scarf or whatever. And then we went into the arena. And that was like something I've never seen before. I've been to a lot of different arenas. I've, you know, been abroad to see shows. But this was absolutely amazing. It was huge. Uh, and it was like a weird shape, really. It was like three sides. So you got the back and the two sides, and then you got this stage that was mahoosive. It was huge. Um, so we found our seats. We was to the side and up. But because it was purposely built because of the screen, um, I don't think there's a bad seat in the house. You've got dancing booths, because um, we're actually going to go back. Loved it that much. <laughs> We're actually going to go back. Um, but they've actually got a seating area you can pay for and a little dancing booth. Uh, so it's a capacity of uh, 3,000, um, 1,500 on the dance area at the front of the stage, and then obviously the seating area around. This show has apparently has been five years in the making. And so we got our seats, and there's this massive screen, 65 million pixel screen. 
Yeah, huge. Um, and it had, um, it looked like free screens the way they'd done it. And it had a little woodland area and it had snow falling and it had a bit of music playing that I do believe is called Skull Gang. This. I won't play much because you know YouTube, they get all funny about it. But anyway, that was a sort of like kind of plan. And that's how it opened up. Now, prior to the show, uh, a voice comes over and says, you know, no phones, no recording. Let's keep this illusion magical, you know. So people actually put their phones away, which I think was terrific. Yeah, I took a couple of photos and a selfie um, when we first got in there, just for the thing. But you, you go to so many shows lately, it's been ridiculous. You go to a show and everyone's got their phone out. How often do you actually watch them videos, you know? Yes, it's nice to say, yeah, I was there, but get a selfie, put your phone in your pocket and have the experience. But I'm not telling you what to do. It's just what I do, you know? There's no point in sitting there recording it. You'll be able to see it later on on YouTube anyway or it'll come out on DVD or streaming. How often do you actually watch them videos and you're missing the moment? Why are you holding your screen up? Screen up you're missing the moment. You thought, That's just my opinion anyway. In the arena, there's all these lights hanging off the ceiling. 500 of them, I do believe, actually, sort of hanging down. They're like long, well, 500 lights hanging down. And the show starts. Um, I can't remember the first song that comes on, but then it was uh, Visitors. But the, they've got avatars. Now... <laughs> it's quite funny actually you know remember the movie Avatar and how they did it, did it. they had like motion capture pads and they'd capture the movement and the expressions of uh, the people in it well these are a stroke on that it's a take on that I mean Avatars not Avatars but I've got to say guys when the band ABBA and this is ABBA not how they are now I mean bless them they're in their 70s now this is in 1979 ABBA when they was in their prime, they were young. They come out the stage, I'm not joking. <laughs> it was like they were there. It's not holograms. I mean, we've all seen Elvis do If I Can Dream with Selling Dion, and that's amazing. This is something else. This is something else. Um, and the show starts. And the light show, I think with the 500 lights that is in the arena and the lights that are incorporated on the screen with the avatars in front of the lights and around the lights, it's mind-blowing. It is absolutely mind-blowing. They did, they only done a couple of uh, songs from the new album, which went down a treat. They were brilliant. But it was hit after hit, Voulez Vous, Summer Night City, Mamma Mia, Waterloo, Chikatita, you name it. That, it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And they've got a band there as well, like a 10-piece, 12-piece band, something like that, down there in the left-hand side. And it kind of beefed them up a bit. Now, whether they was actual recordings of the songs, because some of them sounded very similar to the songs that we all know and love. And some of them sounded slightly different. So I don't know if they had recordings from the old days that they've incorporated into this show. I don't really know that much about it. But I've never seen a show like this in my life. I haven't. I've gone to see Pink Floyd and their light shows are unbelievable. Um, but this surpasses anything I've seen before. Now, I think it's only in London at the moment. But... Apparently, this building with ABBA written on the side, this stadium that they've built for this show, apparently it can be flat-packed and moved on. I'm hoping and praying it stays in London for more than a year that it's supposed to. Uh, I'm hoping to go back in October, November time uh, and get a group crowd of my friends to go and actually get one of them dancing boos, you know, and have our little booth to ourselves. Because I've got friends that I really want them to have the experience and I kind of want to experience it again with a wife. Um, I don't think anything I could say could spoil it because it. I didn't know what to expect. It blew my mind, guys. It really, really did. Now, you could tell. I mean, as like concerts, you know how they are. You've got the band in the middle and then they have the big screens projecting their faces and some of the action on these big screens. Now, when you saw them, I could tell 
that they wasn't quite real. You, you, there was something about the mouth that give it away to me a little. I mean, this is only going to get better. I mean, this is groundbreaking stuff. But to blow them up on a full screen. But the wife couldn't tell. The wife could not tell. I could tell a little bit. But it didn't spoil it. And also, it broke into a music video every now and again, which was quite good. Aurora, I do believe it. Aurora. I can't remember what it was called, actually. But... It is something else, something to be seen. And what is kind of nice uh, at the beginning, Benny comes out like he's talking to us, <laughs> right? And he says, to be or not to be, that is no longer the question. And then he makes some joke about this is really him and he's just aged well. But it, I felt, it, it blew my mind. There's nothing like it. And it was very emotional right at the end of the show as the band fade out. Abba how they are now in their 70s sort of came out. Avatars, avatars, whatever. Uh, and had a bow and all that lot. And I'll be honest with you, it wasn't just exciting, amazing, we was up dancing. It was actually quite emotional. I never dreamt in a million years I would ever get to see Abba. And I feel like, I don't feel robbed. I feel like I've been through an experience that I want to go through again. And I feel like I've been to see Abba. I feel like I've been to see ABBA in their prime. It's quite something. Um, the wife absolutely loved it. So did her friend. But I was blown away to the point. I'm listening to ABBA a little bit more now. I, I'm actually listening to ABBA a little bit more now. I've ripped the CD to my computer. So when I'm pottering around, I have a little listen. It's quite nice. Um, it is quite something. It is something to behold. The marketing campaign for this show was a concert like no other. I have to agree, 100%. For me, it was an experience like no other that I can't wait to do again. I could literally go back there. I could go back there tonight and have a ball. Really, really could. I was not disappointed in at all. I mean, I spoke to a guy after and he was in mixed feelings. He really enjoyed the show, but he felt like he was cheated because he didn't see ABBA. I didn't feel that way. I felt... Completely satisfied. I was on a buzz when I come out of there, like you should do from uh, seeing a, a band live, even though they weren't really live. <laughs> quite amazing. Quite amazing. I do hope once it is finished with London, it does end up going around the world so other people can experience it. But me in England, if you're an ABBA fan and you live in the UK, I'm sure most of you have been already. Go. If you're not an ABBA fan, but you like good concerts, go. It is amazing. So, that's my views on uh, ABBA's Voyage concert. Absolutely amazing. Right, with that, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. Have yourselves a terrific day. Much love. And I'll be back with another ramble real soon. Take care, people.